to episode two of Cooking on a Boat with Kirsten. Today's episode is brought to you from Barkley Sound, on the west coast of Vancouver Island in some little anchorage I can't remember the name of. And this is the rainy day edition because it's raining like crazy out there. So what we're gonna make today is granola. And granola is really easy. All we have is like, no, I'm sorry, we're making granola bars. I'm really tired too. So just from these ingredients, Oats, homemade granola, honey, and last but not least, Bure de Arachnids. Not <laughs> to be confused with ground up spiders, because I keep seeing this and it looks like uh, arachnids to me, but I guess it's de arachides or something. You know how to say it because you're French, or you know French. Okay, cut. So first we just add uh, three quarters cups oats, very exciting. Three quarter, quarters cups uh, homemade granola. Also very exciting. And then I pick out all the almonds and I chop them. Okay, over here at the chopping station, also known as the refrigerator, we will chop our almonds, which is very, very exciting. And today we're only making a half a batch of granola bars because we only have about, I think, maybe two-ish weeks left. And um, so we don't want to make too many granola bars because we don't want to bring those granola bars home with us because they'll taste like boat and that's really disgusting when you're on land. When you're on a boat, it's okay. When you're at home, the thing tastes like boat, it's not okay. So, um, somehow we don't notice it when we're on the boat. So, also, we will also chop up chocolate because there's no granola bar that is complete without chocolate. And we will add these all into our fabulous mixture over here. You guys are supposed to follow me over here and look at how beautiful this is as it goes in. Voila. Okay, now we're going to add our peanut butter. It's a half a cup and it's kind of gloppy. And then we're going to add honey. And the original recipe called for equal parts honey and peanut butter. And what we found from that is those were insanely, 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 insanely sweet. And um, so I quartered it. So there's only like two tablespoons of honey in it instead of a half a cup, which makes a lot more sense. And I'm just gonna, this is a quarter cup. I'm just gonna fill it halfway full because that's one eighth cup or two tablespoons honey. And then we're just gonna mix this all up and um, I'll show you what it looks like after that. Okay, so I mixed this all up and it looks a little dry to me, like it might just fall apart. So I'm just gonna like glop some more stuff in just to try to hold it all together just a little bit. Tiny bit of honey, hopefully not too much. And then we'll mix it up and see if that is more better. So. Okay, so we finally, I finally feel like I have a mixture that's gonna hold together. I just like added stuff until it like felt right. And importantly, you have to like taste it to make sure that it tastes right. So you can see that it's sort of like sticking together there. So at this point, what I do is I just pour it out onto my cutting board. And you have to make sure you have clean hands for this because I actually just washed them just for this step. Oh. You need to just mash it down and this is where it gets messy because you have to actually you can use your knife to do this too it makes it a little less messy you just mash it down and i like doing it on the cutting board because i know it's clean and i know that it's easy to get this off instead of like having to like scrape it off of the counter i also learned this trick back when we were in the camper van for six months that it's way easier to do this because I even have less surface space to work with there. So you just keep mashing it and mashing it and mashing it. You want it really, really tight. And then you start working your edges in like this. Be careful if you're doing this with a knife. No cutting yourself. And you want to get it into like this nice uh, rectangle. You keep pushing it in and just make sure it's all this mixture is really really tight because you're not baking these and you're just gonna cut them up once it's ready to go so you can go ahead and cut and I'll once this is ready I'll show you how to do what to do next okay 
So we squashed our stuff into a square. Now what we have looks like a gigantic granola bar, but we're not gonna leave it this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it into granola bar sized uh, rectangles. You just punch it out a little bit. So then you have to squash them more. So I'm gonna make these all like that. And then I just take them and I squash them together, make them really, really tight, otherwise they fall apart. And then I'll show you how to wrap them, except for I have to wash my hands first and I won't make you watch that. So go ahead and cut it. Okay. So now we're gonna take tin foil and we're just gonna wrap them up individually, which is pretty easy. So let's see, it holds together. There's... Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go the other direction. Yeah, that's gonna be better. So wrap it this way. Oh, that piece is too big, but that's okay. And then I just kind of make sure I have a nice tight seal on the edges, kind of twist it around a little bit. And let's see here, actually, I want to go that way. Voila, you have a good Oliver. And then I just put them in a plastic baggie, like a Ziploc to make sure that like the whole batch stays really uh, more fresh than this. So at any rate, now we have to go see where we are. We are somewhere in Barkley Sound, the name of the Anchorage. I cannot remember. Does anybody know the name of the Anchorage? Beauty? Oh. Ah, Pipe Them in Inlet. It's raining just mildly now and it's uh, really pretty. Thank you for watching the uh, granola bar episode. Have fun. I hope you're having fun in France.